and we have policy regarding that. Dr. Cathedral, in your years here, did you ever think that uh, Ms. Infinger was violating any rules? And if so, why wasn't anything done about it? Well, um, I didn't think, I, I think possibly we were not violating any, any rules, but I think when the bell rang, I, I think it's open to interpretation. When does the school day begin? You know, does it begin on the, the first bell when, school, when the students are warned? That's a warning bell, as we call it, to, to proceed to first period class. Or is it the tardy bell when school officially starts? Um, Ms. Sinfinger was passing out small verses, um, and she usually cut it off right at that first bell, at the first bell. But like I said, if uh, if we received a complaint or a concern that we were out of the compli out of compliance, mm -hmm. then we just fix it. We fix it and uh, we move on. And that's what we're doing now. I mean, if we recognize that there is an issue, um, then we, we, we move on and, uh, and just fix the problem. And that's basically what we've done. And I want to commend Dr. Franklin and Dr. Dozier for, for doing this. If I could add just a couple of statements. It's not unusual for us to receive a complaint. You know, I, I get a little concerned when I get that Washington area code 202, whatever it is. Uh, I know that's usually not a compliment. So what we do is we investigate it. In this case, I thought there was a legitimate concern about the literature. But, you know, we have the governor's office calls from time to time. Citizens, somehow or another, they bypass. It would have been easier if they had mentioned it to me. Or Dr. Farrow, we could resolve this fairly easily. I, I'm not sure why they want to call someone else at times. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we get a call from Dr. Rex's office. We, we handled it pretty much the same way. We talked to the people. Dr. Franklin investigated, did a good job. Talked to Ms. Enfinger. She was very open for coming. And then we suspended the activities until we figure out uh, really what the best path is to move forward. And I think we did that rather quickly. They really haven't lost a lot of time, if anything probably a little more uh, knowledge of what's going on, what's available to the kids. So what was the contact like between the district and the, the Americans United for uh, Separation Church and State? Uh, actually, I received a phone call. The gentleman was very polite, attorney. Uh, I gave it to Dr. Pringle to call and investigate. She actually supervises high schools day to day. and uh, I'll ask her to speak to that. I think he was very polite. And, and pose that question, and I think once he realized what we were doing, reading via the paper, and I think you talked to him later, that um, they were satisfied. Uh, really, in this day and time, too, I want people to realize um, we don't need any future litigation, uh, we don't need any loss of federal revenue, we're a little cash poor like everybody else, uh, so we try to avoid those controversies that may it cause us uh, to uh, spend a little money on uh, attorneys and fees. and Usually there's some happy compromise, and I think in this case it probably will be better in the long run. Do you want to add to that, Dr. Frank? I just wanted to stand up here to say that. Huh. Actually, when we uh, got the inquiry about literature being passed out on campus, within minutes I called Dr. Fair and I said, we got this complaint, tell me about it. And he said, yes, ma'am, it is happening. And we just took care of it immediately. And that's why I believe we got to a resolution so quickly. Because when we got it, we didn't try to hide anything or say we were not doing it. And uh, took care of it right away. And everybody was very uh, pleasant. We haven't gotten any uh, calls where people were nasty to us. Some people said, stop it. Others people said, we need more of it. And so I believe that we will have more students wanting to participate now that they know about it. It's gotten some publicity. I think the same thing will be a vital part of our team in providing uh, services to our students. And we focus on the whole child. And this is just another uh, way that we do that. We have a very, very good relationship with the faith-based community. And it takes all of that. Someone said it takes a village to raise children and that's just another part of the, the village. So we thank all of the uh, individuals who've been working with us. And we thank you, too, for giving us the, co uh, the coverage that you've been giving us. And maybe we can uh, be trendsetters for some of the other districts who might be uh, watching and waiting to see how this is going to come about, the resolution that uh, we will have very quick. Will this be open to other schools as well now, I mean, not just Georgetown High School? 
Yes, well, as a matter of fact, you may recall that at Waccamaw High School we have release time for the courses that the students are taking. In first semester we had 16 students, 17 students in that course. Uh, this semester so far we have six students where they leave the campus and they go um, to another facility and they take religious classes. And so any other school in this district who would like to set up a similar club, yes, it will be open. And when we say prayer club, would that be open to any type of religion? Is it more just a way to observe anyone's religion in that particular setting? Well, I don't know that we're going to focus on any one religion. We're just going to have the group meet and uh, have the student led. We don't intend to uh, leave anybody out. It's open to all of the students at Georgetown High School and they come in under the supervision of staff at Georgetown High School. We will proceed from there. Does this in any way impact the prayers at the uh, school board meeting? I will defer to the boss. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Will they get to continue? Well, I, I think that's another issue. Um, you asked that question, and I, my answer to you for that would be, uh, I know that city council will praise and county council will praise before their meeting. I think the state legislature probably kicks off their session with a prayer. And if memory serves me correctly, I think uh, at the presidential inauguration, they prayed there, too, in the last Carolina Clemson game I went to, I believe they prayed. So I think that's probably a different issue um, uh, that would have to be dealt with at another time. I, I will tell you uh, that for me personally, and I speak for me personally, since and Dr. Farrow may agree, I've never prayed so much or been to church so much since I became superintendent. So uh, you, know, you can keep that in mind. But it is a lot of responsibility, and um, I do think uh, prayer is, is evident wherever we go, and I, I compliment them for working together. Ms. Enfinger may want to say a word or two if you'd like. Or Mr. Miller, I, I asked him to do that. Can we just ask Mr. Miller why you um, decided you wanted to be the sponsor for this group? Well, when I when I found out that um, the complaint that the the complaint was lodged and there was a problem, um, I felt like it was something that needed to be addressed. You know, I, I felt like it was the right thing to do, and we want to continue to provide this kind of service for all of our students at Georgetown High uh, because it, it is the right thing to do as well as the fact that it meets the district's and the school's goals of um, providing a well-rounded education for our students. Um, Ms. Dwyer, have yes, you had any students come up to you already saying, you know, I wasn't part of it before and I want to be part of it? Do they have to sign up through you or through the front office? How does it work? What we'll do is um, I will get to one of the students that has had an active role in this uh, in this club tomorrow, and we will start putting together the posters to put out in the schools in the schools that will be out tomorrow. And then, really, what what will happen is um, come Tuesday, um, the auditorium doors will be open, and all students who wish to participate, no matter what their backgrounds are, are will be welcome to come. And you won't be leading any prayer yourself. No, my, my position there will just be as a, in the supervisory capacity. And I'm going to be there to you know make sure everything is um, our, that our students are safe and, and that um, they're able to get into the into the auditorium itself and that they're properly supervised. 